Hi, my name is Neil Holsby and Alexei Dosovitsky and I will present our work, An Image is Worth 16 by 16 Words, Transformers for Image Recognition at Scale. This is work done at Google Research with our colleagues Lucas Bayer, Alex Kolesnikov, Dirk Weissenborn, Xiao Zhai, Thomas Untertiner, Mustafa Degani, Matthias Mindera, Georg Heigold, Sylvain Shelley, and Jakob Uschkereit. So convolutional neural networks have been the go-to architecture for computer vision for some time now, have become particularly popular around about 2012, and they perform very well on many, many vision tasks. However, in other domains, uh, particularly language, the transformer has emerged as a very performant network. And it has also been shown to scale very well, for example, with models like GPT-3 and M4. And so what we look at in this paper is, can we make use of the pure transformer network for computer vision? So why might we want an architecture like the transformer, which scales well for vision? Well, one reason is transfer learning, and this is the main use case studied in this paper. So transfer learning has been done for some time, and uh, ImageNet networks are interesting not only because they uh, can predict the ImageNet classes, but also uh, because they can transfer to many other tasks and improve performance on those downstream tasks. And furthermore, on many, if not most, of the popular vision benchmarks and, vision, and benchmarks in other domains, um, the top performing models uh, perform some kind of transfer learning, whether it's transfer learning from other labeled sources or weekly labeled sources, uh, pseudo labels, or transfer maybe from multimodal pre training. And transfer learning is neat not only because it works on medium or large data, set, data sets like ImageNet with a million images. Um, but it's also effective on smaller data downstream tasks. And in fact, perhaps it's more effective when the amount of downstream data is limited. And in the limit of few shot learning, transfer has been shown to be effective. So the very well known GPT 3 paper uh, shows that uh, large language models can be used for few shot text based tasks. And in computer vision, some work from our group has shown that uh, large scale transfer. Um, can work well on popular tasks like ImageNet when transferred using only one image per class. And so this figure is uh, taken from this uh, big transfer uh, prior work, and it demonstrates the benefits of scale for transfer learning. So on the y-axis is ImageNet accuracy, and this is for various models transferred from data sets of different sizes. And the main message is when you increase the size of the pre-training data, perform improves a performance improves a little bit. And when you increase the model size, uh, performance improves a little bit. But when you increase both in conjunction, performance improves a lot. And this can be seen from the light blue model, which is the largest architecture, whose performance just continues to improve uh, as the size of the pre-training data uh, increases. And so this really motivates uh, scaling for vision, uh, scaling transfer for vision, and other papers have shown similar effects. I should note at this point that um, when we talk about uh, large-scale training, we're talking about pre-training, um, which uh, may be expensive, but is performed only once. And the process of transfer itself uh, may be very cheap and indeed is typically much cheaper than training from scratch. For example, GPT-3, um, given the prompts, just requires forward passes uh, and transferring the, the bit models uh, only requires uh, a few fine tuning steps, uh, many less than, than is required uh, for, for training from scratch. And so this motivates trying transformers uh, which scale very well uh, for this application in vision. And so the main message of the paper is we explore the use of a pure transformer for vision, uh, focusing on this transfer learning use case. Uh, we study the scaling properties of the model and compare it to traditional confnets, as well as hybrids of confnets and transformers, and look a bit at what the model learns. Perhaps most importantly, we open source uh, vision transformers pre-trained on the large ImageNet 21K dataset uh, that can be used for practitioners or for researchers uh, to try out new downstream tasks. 
So without further ado, uh, here is the model itself. So we used um, what is as close as possible to a vanilla transformer encoder like the one used in BERT. And the BERT encoder accepts as input a sequence of word embeddings. And so to turn an image into a sequence of embeddings, we first split the image into a grid of patches and then linearly project uh, those patches uh, to vectors. Now, at this stage, the order of the patches is lost. So as is popular in language, we add position embeddings such that the model um, can uh, learn uh, the uh, location of the patches uh, and how that influences loss uh, if that information is useful. Uh, we then feed these embeddings into a standard transformer encoder. And again, as for BERT, we have a dummy token uh, that can attend to all the other tokens, and we attach the classification head to the uh, representation uh, for that dummy token. These are the models that we experiment with in the paper. So we have the vision transformer base and large, and these follow the BERT base and large architectures. They have the same number of layers and same hidden dimensions. We also experiment with a larger version, VIT huge. The notation is as follows. So VIT dash L 16 means a uh, vision transformer large version with 16 by 16 pi pixel patches. So a smaller final number would mean smaller patches and hence a longer sequence and actually a larger architecture. As I mentioned before, we also experiment with a hybrid. This hybrid follows a popular design for combining convolutions with attention. We pass an image through a ResNet, and then instead of feeding um, the patches uh, directly to the vision transformer, we feed a linearized uh, intermediate feature maps uh, to the VIT model. And this model serves as a useful ablation. So I'll now hand over to Alexi uh, to present the results. Thanks, Neil. So now let's talk about the experiments. The first one is about the pre-training data set size. On the x-axis are the increasingly large pre-training data sets, ImageNet, ImageNet22MK, and JFT. And on the y-axis is the transfer top one accuracy on ImageNet. Colorful circles are vision transformers of different sizes, and the shaded area corresponds to ResNets of different sizes from the big transfer work. The main conclusion here is that vision transformers tend to overfit on smaller data sets, uh, like ImageNet, and thus perform slightly worse than ResNets. But on larger data sets, transformers shine, and they are they match or outperform ResNets. This next plot is about the pre-training compute. The y-axis is still transfer accuracy, although in this case averaged over five data sets. And the x-axis is the computational cost of pre-training in exaflops. We compare models of three different types, ResNets, vision transformers, and hybrids between ResNets and transformers. There are two main observations to be made here. First, transformers outperform ResNets across the board, achieving the same transfer accuracy with two to four times less compute. Second, hybrids have an advantage over transformers for small models on the left-hand side, but this advantage vanishes for larger models on the right. Mm -hmm. This means that scale, the general transformer architecture, is sufficient to get great results. Now let's compare vision transformers to state-of-the-art continents. We evaluate on multiple popular image classification data sets, such as ImageNet, CIFAR, PETS, Flowers, as well as the VTAB benchmark that itself includes 19 different tasks. The last row also shows the pre-training compute in TPU core days. Our two baselines are Noisy Student, which is a large efficient net pre-trained in semi-supervised fashion, and BIT, which is a large ResNet pre-trained in supervised fashion. Our largest model, which with H14, outperforms both baselines, in some cases by a substantial margin, while using roughly four times less compute to pre-train. Note that this advantage in pre-training compute may be caused not only by the architecture, but also by hyperparameter choices like learning rate schedule and such. A small model with L16 still matches our performance the baselines on all data sets except for ImageNet, while being over 14 times cheaper to train. Finally, with L16 trained on ImageNet 221K still performs very well, takes even less resources to pre-train, and is released publicly. 
As a reminder, while pre-training may be relatively computationally intense, it only has to be done once, and the subsequent fine-tuning is fast because it only requires a small number of training steps. All right, now let's compare the inference speed of fit and resonance. The x-axis here is the input image resolution from 64 by 64 to 512 by 512. The y axis is the inference speed in images per second per TPU core. There are two main observations here. First, uh, ResNets and WITS have similar inference speed in general. For instance, the two fastest models, ResNet 50 and WIT B32, are very close. The two slowest models, ResNet 152 by 4 and WIT H14, are very close too. The second observation is that the inference speed of WIT mainly scales linearly with the input resolution and only for models with uh, smaller 16 by 4, 16 patches and large image resolutions, the quadratic cost of self-attention starts kicking in. Now let's try to gain some insight into what the model learned. We first look at the position embeddings. We visualize the cosine similarity between the position embeddings learned at different locations. Uh, to this end, each small image corresponds to taking a single patch and computing the cosine similarity of this patch's position embedding to all the others. And different small images use different query patches. Uh, as can be seen from this visualization, the model has clearly learned some local structure, uh, as evidenced by these yellow blobs that show that each patch is most similar to patches nearby. But the structure is not completely local. For instance, in some cases, there are these two or four blob structures. Uh, that means that the uh, position embeddings are not only similar locally. Now we analyze the receptive field size of attention heads in it. Specifically, for each attention head in each layer, we plot the average distance between a query patch and the patches it tends to. For instance, if the patch only attends to its immediate neighbors, then the receptive field is very small, while if it attends to the whole image, the receptive field is large. The x-axis here corresponds to the model's layers, and different dots are different attention heads. We can see that in the early layers, some attention heads are local and some are global, and then deeper in the model, attention becomes gradually more global. Starting from roughly the middle, uh, attention is exclusively global. Again, we see that the model learned the intuitive notion of locality in the early layers, but it also has the flexibility to use global attention in all layers if it needs to. Finally, a few words about uh, related work. We are not the first ones to propose using attention for vision. Uh, for instance, Cordonier and colleagues applied an architecture very similar to ours, but at small scale and with two by two patches. Who and colleagues and Ramachandran and colleagues used ResNet-like models with convolutions replaced by local self-attention. Wang and colleagues experimented with ResNet-like models with convolutions replaced by Excel attention. Carrion and colleagues applied a ResNet transformer hybrid to object detection. Uh, Chen et al. trained transformers on generative modeling of images and have then used representations learned by these uh, models for recognition. Since it came out, there have been quite a lot of research based on it or inspired by it. Here we mention just a few selected examples. Um, Tuvron and colleagues have shown that with strong regularization, VIT can be trained from scratch on not so huge data sets like ImageNet. And they have also shown that uh, distillation from a ConvNet gives some additional benefit. Zheng et al. applied a VIT-like architecture to semantic segmentation. Redford and colleagues have shown that uh, vision transformers outperform ResNets when trained on large image and text datasets. Srinivas et al. have explored ResNet transformer hybrids and have shown that this can work very well on ImageNet and other tasks. Finally, Wang and colleagues explored a pyramid-shaped vid uh, with feature map resolution gradually decreasing uh, towards the deeper layers, and they have shown that this model can work very well on classification and detection. To conclude, we have found that transformers are surprisingly good at image classification, especially if trained at scale. And using transfer learning, uh, our vision transformers achieved state-of-the-art results on multiple popular benchmarks. 
If you'd like to try VIT, our official code as well as pre-trained models are released and we're adding new better models as they're coming along. So stay tuned. There are also several re-implementations of VIT. For instance, this PyTorch re-implementation in the team repository is nice. That's it from our side. Thanks for your attention and we're happy to answer any questions you may have.